The Prime Minister has increased the pressure on technology companies over extremist material on their platforms, raising the prospect of a new legal liability if they fail to remove what she called unacceptable content. After the London Bridge attack, she also spoke of the need to review anti-terrorism strategy to ensure the authorities have the powers they require. Well, the independent reviewer of terrorism legislation is Max Hill QC, who was appointed to the role in March, and he's in our radio car. Good morning. Good morning. Do you believe that the authorities have the powers they need at the moment, or are there gaps? Can I say that I share the horror that we all feel after the three attacks in the last three months, which happened to have coincided with my first three months in this role? And it's perfectly natural that we should all feel that we must do more, we must do something to combat what we are facing. In answer to your question, though, my uh, view coming into the scrutiny, which we're told the Prime Minister wants to conduct, is that we do have the appropriate laws in place and that essentially the police and the security services and those whose job it is to keep us safe do have the powers at their disposal. Uh, and so that is my starting position. We have to remember that uh, terrorism offences can be in can get included within the Terrorism Acts, but we can also use the entirety of the criminal law to charge criminal offending when it happens. And we have to remember that when something atrocious like the event on London Bridge happens, it's the act of criminals uh, committing murder. And we've always been able to deal with that. So if, if you do not, uh, if, if you feel that we do have the appropriate laws in place, is it a question that we are, and I'm, I'm talking specifically about anti-terrorist measures, that we are not using those as much as we might? For example, we're told that there are as many as 23,000 potential uh, suspects, extremist suspects out there, and yet we only have six or seven TPIMs in place. Yes, there, 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 plainly there, there's a primary purpose for the legislation, which is to bring in front of a, an open court in terms of criminal proceedings those who are reasonably suspected to have committed criminal acts. And that must be the first intention, to put people on trial. And that is done effectively and regularly, year on year, using the Terrorism Acts. It is only where it is not possible to put someone on trial that you resort to other measures such as TPIMs. But they are, uh, or they have been proved to be, an effective mechanism in disrupting those who it is believed represent a risk to national security. There is a question, though, in current circumstances over whether there may be a need for a proportionate increase in the use of the existing TPIM powers. Rather and than strengthening the them and bringing them yeah. closer to what, what, what were the old control orders. But plainly, we've all lived through the years, 2005 to 2011, when control orders were in place. They were perceived to have been replaced with a slightly weaker regime under TPIMS. But in fact, when you analyse the powers available to the courts in terms of scrutiny and to the security services under TPIMS, they represent a very significant infringement on the otherwise ordinary human rights of those who are subject to TPIMS. And they have been strengthened recently. For example, in 2015, the power of relocation was introduced into TPIMS. It was part of the control order regime, not put in place when TPIMS replaced them in 2011. But there is now the power to simply remove an individual from their home, from their family even, and from their location by up to 200 miles. And that is a power which is being used. Um, but I'm interested to know what you think about, you know, what it is possible to do when you identify people who might hold these, you know, deeply unpleasant views and might pose a, a risk to the public in future. Take Khurram Butt, for example, the London Bridge attacker, and the fact that he was, um, you know, seen on camera in a, in a Channel 4 documentary unfurling what appeared to be uh, an ISIS flag. Now, there is an offence, is there not, of glorification of terrorism? There are offences of encouraging and facilitating and preparing for terrorism, and they're all part of the statutory structure that we have. Would he have the fallen under that in, in, in appearing on camera the way he did? 
Well, it, it's, it's not for me to say uh, one way or the other whether he actually committed an offence. Plainly, that is something which is part of the wider investigation uh, into the atrocity on London Bridge. Uh, what uh, I think it is plain is that there is material which was known about this individual to the security services, but material doesn't always translate into evidence, and it is evidence that they need to place someone before a court where they don't have evidence, and it is, uh, on the contrary, intelligence, then it is a matter of this uh, extraordinary sift and assessment that the security services have to perform to try to keep us all safe. And we know that that is a colossal task.